Good afternoon. I'm John Shank from Deerwood Realty, and I wanted to go over something that has been percolating in the back of my mind for a while now. And I think it's something that's being overlooked. And I don't know why. I don't know that there's a sinister, I don't think, I don't know that there's people in the, in the back, um, you know, pulling the strings of the puppet or I, I don't, I don't think that actually it would be a marionette. But anyway, um, I did want to go over uh, this, uh, this, I want to go over the narrative and then I want to show you what I think and then we'll put the two together and see if it makes any sense and if it, if it does, that's great and if it doesn't, then it's one video that I, that I didn't do well on, which add, added up, it's, it's no big deal. So let's get to it. The first thing I wanted you to see was this article. This came out on like MSN or something and uh, it says, you know, house hunters have been, have lost 71,000 in buying power since last summer. Well, that doesn't sound good, right? So, but why did they lose the 71,000 in, actually it's from money. I don't want to not credit somebody. So why did they lose? All right. So then I was like, okay, let's, let's look at the narrative. It says home buyers purchasing power is rapidly slipping away as mortgage rates continue creeping up. According to a new analysis. In fact, Someone with a $3,000 monthly budget can now only afford a $429,000 home compared to a $500,000 home one year ago. And so this was written in um, August of this year. So this is the narrative, right? Home affordability has been impacted and is terrible because mortgage rates are high. Which, like, as I work in the business of helping people buy and sell homes, that's not not intuitively the way I feel. It says, historically high mortgage rates, rising prices, and low inventory are making it especially difficult to purchase a home right now. So in this line, there is a little hint of what might be the issue, but it's not, it's not produced. I'll, I'll, I, I don't know why it's, it's kind of avoided. It says the estimate, which comes from real estate broker Redfin, uh, reflects a $71,000 loss in buying power since last August, yet another blow to long-suffering U.S. home buyers who have been dealing with unfavorable market conditions or circumstances since 2020. And that's true. It, you know, I had people in like 2019 that were like, should we just give up? Should we just stop looking? Um, and then I'm not worried about the data too much, but it says the outlook for home buyers. I thought this was interesting because this was in August. It says it's been a rough few years for Americans trying to buy homes. Pandemic induced migration and the ensuing home buying frenzy pushed prices way up in 2020. OK, so now there's another reason for prices to go way up. Resulting in bidding wars between buyers who could still afford to compete for property. Just as the market started showing signs of cooling in the summer of 2022, the Federal Reserve's inflation-busting rate hikes. Now, it's a little, little hint. But they don't just come right out and say it, so we'll just keep going. Pushed even more buyers out of the market as homeowners locked into their current mortgages. Okay. This high mortgage rates have edged home sellers out of the market too, creating an even greater imbalance between supply and demand. Now buyers are contending with a nightmare trio of historically high monthly mortgage payments, historically high prices, and historically low inventory as sellers retreat. That's the narrative. That's what you've been hearing over and over and over again. There's an imbalance. Might have been created by the Fed. We don't know. And then it says, per recent reports from real estate marketplace Zillow, the typical home is now valued at almost $350,000, and values are expected to grow 6.5% over the next year. Hmm. So I just want to just, just kind of get right here and, and think about this for a minute. So we are told that um, the, the reason why uh, the reason why affordability is gone is because mortgage rates are high, right? I mean, that would be the general, I'm not, I don't, I hope I'm not, you know, straw manning or anything. I, the general consensus amongst those people that write these articles is that's the reason. But I've been talking about something for a long time and, uh, it seems like there's never a, a, a way to, to bridge the two. So let's just look at this other little tweet, a very simple tweet. It says, I got to get there. It says, 
all the headlines say that inflation is now 3.7%. But what they fail to mention is that this is building on years of inflation. 3.7 inflation is building on 8.2% in September of 2022 and 5.4% in September of 2021. This means that inflation since September of 2021 has been nearly 20%. Furthermore, even if the rate of inflation is falling, prices are still rising. Many people confuse disinflation with deflation. E even with disinflation, which we have now, prices are still rising. And I think that is the answer. I think, I think we've been overlooking inflation in the affordability debate. And I think that um, I would like to believe that the people that watch my videos are probably probably pretty sharp for the most part. I, I, I've seen some of their comments. But it's the inflation part of it is, is tricky. For instance, it, because it, it's destroying your purchasing power. It, it's, it's, it's different than home affordability in a way. Let me, try, let me try and do it this way. If you've got a $500,000, the traditional argument is you get a $500,000 house and you have a 2% mortgage rate, it's probably more affordable right, than an 8% inflation rate, okay? But what if that $500,000 house, okay, is, um, is inflation adjusted, that $500,000 house just with inflation eating away with it is like $540,000, $550,000 now. So you've lost that. You've lost that. The, the purchasing power is down because your value of your money is down, okay? And you say, well, we're going to fix the inflation problem. We're going to get back to the target of 2%. Yeah, that's great. However, like as the, as the tweet mentioned, you're up 20%. So just getting down to 2% is not, is not helping. That's why this is such a mess. You know, I don't, I, in, in some ways, I don't understand why it's so obvious to see the effects of inflation in some things and not in others. So if you look at the grocery store, right, I mean, you say you buy a thing of bananas, right? Now the bananas are more expensive than they were two years ago. And you say, well, that's inflation, okay? And you don't go into the supply and demand uh, of bananas, right? I don't think anything of it. Um, another space where inflation seems to be hidden in my mind, uh, tax revenues. Tax revenues seem to go up, right? But, but it, it, it's inflation. You have, you, you, you have people making more money, but the money's worth less. And then similarly in housing, what, like, what a, people say the housing market's going to crash. I've been, I don't even understand, I mean, we can define what a crash is, okay? But, but you have to explain to me how you're going to have house prices dramatically decline in a short period of time, okay, that's what we're gonna go with for a crash, with inflation which has eaten up the buying power, okay? Not affordability, the buying power. Your dollar has gone lower. You, you, the, the, the ability to buy something is lower now than it was three years ago. And so how is that gonna be reflected in home prices going forward. Um, it's it's going to be, uh, it's going to be almost impossible to, to, to get that number right. Okay, they have like inflation adjusted pricing, they have all this stuff, but, but what's happening is the affordability, um, the affordability narrative is, is beating out the inflation narrative at this time. And so uh, what I would just say to to everyone is like, look, pay attention to how corrosive and evil and bad inflation is. Make sure that you put it first in your discussions with your family and friends. And maybe we can get an understanding here that, that you know, printing off, you know, millions and millions and millions and billions of dollars and just handing it to everyone is, is, is really, really affecting our ability to, to buy things. Our dollar is just not going very far anymore. And, it, 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 you know, the price of the home because of inflation is going to stay higher for longer. 
you may say, well, if people stop buying, you know, like, okay, what happens if market forces come into play and people stop buying homes, the home prices will go down, right? Well, in theory, yes, right? But, but that's still not accounting for inflation. It's still not, for instance, you know, like just think of it this way. A $300,000 home in 1980, I, I'm pretty sure is not worth $300,000 now. I mean, that would get you a shack right now in most parts of the country. And, and it, would have been a, you know, it would have been a mansion. So just, just keep that in mind. There's, there's not a whole lot you can you know, do about it, but just don't overlook the corrosive effects of inflation as we go forward in the housing market as part of the conversation about home affordability. That's all I have for you today. I hope, I hope it made sense. You know, I don't know, but I tried. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one.